Hey friends, this is a travel vlog of a trip that I got a chance to go on to a country that is near and dear to my heart, Japan. This was probably one of the best countries that I've ever visited. The cleanliness, technology, food, architecture, rich and vibrant culture like no other. For those that are here for another nuclear related video, this video is pure travel vlog, documenting my experiences traveling Kyoto, Tokyo, and Osaka in my free time. In this vlog, you'll get a sneak peek of my experiences enjoying the cuisine, touring temples, and majestic gardens, the glorious Japanese vending machines, world-class transportation, and overall an adventure of a lifetime. As I flew into Japan, I was greeted by this epic sunset view. I think I saw Mount Fuji in the background too. 13 hours into the future. Yeah, the time zone difference between Japan and North America is huge, which means that whenever everyone sleeps, you're gonna be awake. Yeah, so work from home, it's kind of tough. Let's jump into breakfast in Japan. Let's start off with one of the highlights of my trip. The food in Japan is to die for. If you like fish, seafood, meat, you'll love the food here. And if you're vegetarian, good luck. I found the food to be extremely healthy as well. Most meals here are very well balanced with lots of protein and vegetables. Yeah, Japanese eat extremely healthy. And here's a healthy breakfast I had in Japan. There's uh, scrambled eggs. So notice that their eggs are super runny here, uh, which is a little bit different from what I'm really used to. I'm used to, you know, more of the traditional kind of um, well done. Uh, got some greens there and some salmon as well. Next is probably a strange highlight of a traditional dish I tried for the first time for breakfast called natto. It's fermented soybeans. It smells like ammonia and when you add this mustard type liquid, it looks kind of like mucus. However, it's surprisingly very good. Kind of tastes like beans. Here's a quick snapshot of me mixing it up with some rice before devouring it. Yeah, it was hasty. Afterward, I also had some miso soup, mochi for dessert, which I love, and another green tea type of dessert to top that off. What I love about desserts in Japan is that they have significantly reduced sugar as compared to desserts in North America. And here's the moment I go to try out a Japanese pancake. Yes, this pancake was fluffy. It had a cake-like consistency. The cream was both matcha and also layered with red bean paste. I ate this entire thing to myself with no issues and because of the reduced sugar in all of the desserts. That goes for pop drinks and vending machines and many of the sugary items everywhere in the country. You just have less sugar in everything, which is great for your overall health and productivity. Also, here's a green tea pudding that I had the chance to try out. It's both soft and yummy. Next is another cool highlight called Nishiki Market. So Nishiki Market, I got a chance to check out. It's located in Kyoto and this is a shopping street home to around 100 different restaurants and shops. This is also known as the Kitchen of Kyoto where you can find all sorts of special seafood, sushi, pastries, desserts, mochi, you name it and it's here. It's great to travel along with your friends, which I had a chance to do. I had a great group of friends, which I got a chance to tour this market with and we were taste testing all the various foods. So with our friend group, we got a chance to try Japanese octopus balls or called takoyaki, which were incredible. They were super, super hot. So you really got to wait for them to cool down or else you'll burn your mouth. Uh, there you have it. There's some takoyaki you got right there, right? With some spring onions and uh, cheese and uh, mayonnaise as well. <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, yeah, so far so good. Uh, uh, I haven't got to try it yet, but I think it'll be delicious. Uh, what, are, what, what do you guys think of the flavor? It's great. Oh, very good. I can hot. recommend. Yeah, it's yeah, like <laughs> way too hot. Yeah. <laughs> spicy enough? No, no, it's not spicy. No, it's very good. <laughs> yeah. I can recommend. But it's flavorful. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So just trying out new things at this Nishiki Market. You see me down there. See down there. There's a lot. There's a lot of rules here too. Like you can't walk and eat. So that's new. Yeah. So we're trying to. I've never seen that ever. That's that's one thing that we're trying to follow. We can only eat in front of the store, which is right here. Um, so um, yeah. It's, uh, uh, enjoy. Overall, Nishiki Market is one of the best places to grab a quick snack and try out fresh, authentic Japanese cuisine. Everything is super cheap and affordable here as well, which is a major plus. And with the dollar and yen conversion, I found that cost of things were pretty, pretty affordable. All right, so another highlight was conveyor belt sushi. So although in Canada, all you can eat sushi, sushi is popular. Japan has its own version called conveyor belt sushi. So. I got a chance to go to this popular spot with my friend Gustavo, and here's us indulging on some delicious sushi. So I'm here, my buddy Gustavo. 
Stop, are you ready to eat? Yeah, I'm starving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ray, we all get seated. Ray, you can stop right next to me. <laughs> got the monster here. We're gonna be eating a lot. All right. So, as you can see, this is the conveyor style, style, style sushi, right? You basically pick up whatever you like, and you got some delicious stuff going left and right here. And all you do is you basically slide in the plate and you put it right over here, right? And um, how many how many dishes are you ready to eat in Stavo? Uh, maybe 16, 17. <laughs> <laughs> 17 dishes, all right. So this is extremely, extremely delicious stuff coming here, the seared fatty tuna. Okay, fatty tuna is uh, one of the most expensive things here that I've seen. Um, so uh, cool to try that out. And then also there's a uh, fatty eel, right? I just love the eel since last night. <laughs> a couple nights ago, I tried eel and got hooked on it. And then you have this assorted sashimi plate as well with, uh, with, a, hand, um, with a hand roll as well. So got a lot of food. And when you're done with the dishes, you just throw them in here and they count, count up however much you're eating. But yeah, overall really cool to just see see these things come in. You just pop open the boxes like this, and you just take it out, right? Um, and uh, just yeah, cool to cool to just uh, really really interesting uh, stuff that they got got here. Probably gonna order dessert soon after eating a couple more of these, and then uh, gonna be good to go. All right, so next are another highlight of Japan, which are surprising, but they are the vending machines. So back in Canada, I rarely use vending machines, only when I'm really desperate. However, because they are really overpriced and usually don't have many options rather than your Pepsi, Cola, and just water and just Nest tea, just very simple, basic options. However, in Japan, vending machines are probably one of the top highlights. You get a large assortment of drinks, both hot and cold. Also, unlike North American drinks, Japanese beverages have a lot less sugar. It's insane how these machines are able to keep these beverages warm, especially the bottles and cans. The vending machines and a lot of the stores, they keep the, the warm drinks hot, right? So when you buy a coffee or you can actually get some onion soup here, it's gonna be really warm, okay? You got some corn porridge, okay? Um, and uh, you know, these are just like the regular coffee types. Uh, you also got root beer. So every single vending machine here usually has a different mix of different of beverages. Uh, so here you see three of them and you see them side by side and you see the diversity in terms of even the different types of waters. Um, some have energy drinks, some have coffees um, and energy drinks. Some have uh, different types of juices and sodas. So honestly, it's 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 awesome. It's 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 really cool and it's convenient. Really cheap as well. Um, you know, everything everything is within like 100 yen to 120 yen, which is pretty much the same as what you get at the gas station here as well. Um, so awesome, just a really cool feature that I wanted to show you guys. Something that uh, you know you may check out. You may see time to time again in terms of. Uh, Japan and its vending machines, but uh, it's cool to just get your hands on one and see see it So let's see if I can buy something right now um, With my uh, handy coins you got this. Okay, I put too much I put 700 yen just like seven dollars in there, but I want to try out this camel, this camel water and There you have it there you there you go last but not least convenience stores in Japan are built for convenience. Yes, Japanese convenience stores have everything and you name it, they are literally paradise. Now I'll give you a quick tour of a 7-Eleven in Japan. And here's what it looks like to go through a 7-Eleven. All these 7-Elevens are across Japan. You can find them in every little nooky and cranny. And I'm gonna be showing you what's inside one of these uh, convenience stores. Okay. So, you know, I'm just walking in here, right, and awkwardly kind of filming. And what you'll notice is uh, some of the drinks, right? So you've got, uh, you know, various drinks here, right? Uh, some of which are my favorites, the yogurt, uh, yogurt type of drinks, right? Which are also sodas. Uh, then, uh, you know, you can find your, just like any other convenience store, all the, all your other kind of uh, toiletries and anything else you need. Then you have uh, like different uh, canned foods okay which there's quite a lot here as you can see okay so there's different curry powders okay you see some butter chicken curry powder apparently these are 7-eleven premium brands okay uh and then next you have uh, you know your assortment of soy sauces and other snacks 
and then you got your ramen, right? So look how big this ramen aisle is, right? It's insane how large this is, right? So you got all these types of different types of ramen. So you just add cold water to it, and then hello, uh, and then you know you got your chocolates here, right? Uh, so pretty cool assortment of different chocolates, right? So if you like to snack, this is kind of snack heaven right here. Um, <clears throat> so you see all of these, okay? And then you got a little bit of, I feel like that's alcohol, I'm not too sure, but uh, you got that here as well. Huge kind of uh, area with that as well. And then this is kind of my, um, the hot drinks, right? So you got the cold drinks, you got baked items. These bakeries are great, especially if you want a late night snack. So you got mochi here, you got other baked goods, right? Which are really fresh and soft and delicious. And you got a lot of food, food items, right? So you have food items which are kind of already packaged, right? That you can just grab on the go and eat. You got your huge ice cream. Okay, and then here you got even more food, right? Which is straight up like containers. And you know, you'll see like spaghetti here, and you'll see like sometimes there's lasagna here and many other things. So, uh, pretty cool to see this. And then, this is my favorite aisle. This is the aisle that I was waiting for. Uh, it is uh, the coffee aisle, right? And you got lots and lots and lots of coffees here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a coffee. Okay, I already had a coffee, but maybe I need another one uh, to wake me up. And then take it from there. So what's crazy is these coffees are kept hot, um, you know, in these plastic bottles, which seems so weird, but I think there's some sort of a science that's going on here. I'm not sure how the system works, but it's pretty, pretty cool. All right, so there you have it. There is the 7-Eleven. Uh, and then you have these automated machines, which actually do the selling for you. You can just throw your coins in there and it's good to go, basically. All right, so I'm just gonna be, uh, going up here to the cash and checking this out. All right, see you guys. One of the major highlights of my trip is Japan's transport system. It's truly a dream system. It's efficient, it's fast, it's cheap, and you can literally travel the whole country without a car, which for someone that comes from Canada, which has a horrible transit system, this place is paradise. If you want to go from one side of the country to the other side, you take an ultra fast speed train called the Shinkansen. The bullet train travels almost 200 miles per hour. Yes, it's incredible. What's mind blowing is that when you're inside, it's almost as though you're gliding in air. The front of the train is shaped like a kingfisher's beak, which helps in overall noise reduction. All right, you see that? That is it. Okay. Yeah. So. My train has arrived, okay, uh, the Shinkansen, I'm in part number 13 and seat number I gotta figure out. So basically these seats are reserved in advance, you basically get on, you reserve your seat, you sit down, it's pretty chill, you know, within two to three hours, you're flying, right? Uh, so uh, there you have it, that's the Shinkansen, that's a really cool experience, you know, you got these mountains in the background, I don't know if you can see or not. But uh, really looking forward to this ride, it's super smooth, there's no bumps along the way, and uh, it's fast, so let's take from there. And within a few hours, you can purchase your ticket and go across the country in a very comfortable ride of your life. It's like sitting in an airplane, but way more comfortable. The seating is super comfortable, you've got lots of luggage space for your suitcases, and lots of legroom as well. A bit on the expensive side, however, it's worth it for the trip. Next, there are the standard subway trains, which aren't as fast as the Shinkansen, but but very, very cheap and always running non-stop. So if you accidentally miss one, there's another one a few minutes train ride away. And everyone in Japan is using these systems, which make them, I guess, even more affordable and much more convenient. You know, at first glance, the transport system seems a bit daunting. However, in no time, if you use Google Maps, you're able to get around the country quite easily. However, when it comes to inner city travel, taxis are very expensive which is a perfect time for another highlight, how Japan encouraged me to get active and really bike around cities. It's very easy to rent bikes in Japan. They're available on almost every street corner because 
they're super cheap, and there's lots of infrastructure around the entire country which facilitates biker friendliness. Alternatively, like I said, taxis are very expensive. So if you want to travel a shorter distance and explore, you can rent a bike for the day and for just for a few dollars. And here's a handy bike rental that I got for $6 for a few hours of riding, which is pretty good value. I also noticed that these bikes are a bit different than the ones we've got in North America. Here's a quick tour of me working through how Japanese bike work. Uh, so what you'll see is, you know, you'll see this locking mechanism here. So what you could do is you could lock it and just put it anywhere. I guess people, you know, trust each other a lot uh, in this part of the world. Um, and then, you know, you got a little basket here, super well made construction wise. And I'll, I'll show you around. I'll do a little bit of uh, vlogging while, while biking, hopefully safely. So uh, excited to show you that. Here's some B-roll footage of how calm streets in Japan look like while biking. You'll notice that these streets, sidewalks are both extremely clean and well-maintained. Bike lanes are color-coded as well, which shows how organized city infrastructure is. All right, so next I had the chance to go to the gym in Japan. I did manage to squeeze in a few gym sessions at my time in Japan, which I highly recommend while traveling, especially if you wanna keep those gains and burn off some of that food that you're non-stop eating. Gym culture is very different here in Japan. Caution, there are a lot of rules. To start off, there are strong restrictions for using outdoor shoes inside the gym. You've got to bring a second pair, which are indoor only. I know this is a bit of a culture thing and of only using indoor shoes indoor. However, it's also enforced at the gym. Secondly, masks must be worn at all times, even while doing an exercise. What you'll notice in Japan is that even though COVID has well passed, the mask culture is still pretty big here. So you may wanna keep a few masks handy whenever you're going to public facilities or gym. They still have strict mandates. The lights are dim instead of the gym, which is very well lit, uh, which I'm more used to in the Western world. I think it's there to protect the privacy of others. So another rule is that you simply cannot speak on your phone with others inside of the gym. You've really got to be mindful and quiet of others that are focusing on their workouts, which I think is good etiquette. Yes, that includes grunts as well for those who are doing those heavy deadlifts and squats and getting a bit out of control, uh, you gotta control those grunts. So simply checking out the gym and getting a few sessions in was quite the experience. Fair warning though, the gyms here are a bit more expensive than what you'll find in North America and a little bit more difficult to find. Another highlight I experienced during my time here were the temples, trees with fall colors and these majestic temples really put you in a state of mind of perfect peace and zen. If you'd like to explore temples, Kyoto is the spiritual hub of Japan and honestly the perfect place to learn about Japanese history, zen gardens, and immerse yourself in the local architecture. Locals also dress up in traditional clothing while visiting these temples which I found really cool. And here's one of the temples that we were at with majestic mountain views.
Out of all the gardens, this red maple leaf tree really stood out to me as a perfect spot to read a book. You can also find so many gardens surrounding temples throughout the Kyoto area. We're here at a temple, uh, which I just kind of give you a little bit of a sneak peek into. But right behind there is a garden which has the most stunning, uh, stunning leaves, fall colors ever. And it has a little bit of a stream here with different colors and you could tell how much time and energy that they put into the maintaining this area, right? Uh, it's no small feat. Um, and you can see that right behind me, um, all of these you know, amazing colors blending and coming together to, to give such an like, amazing feel and energy here, atmosphere. Uh, so just, uh, just walking through that now. Um, and it's, it's been a really cool, cool uh, area to explore actually. So yeah. So hope you can enjoy that B-roll that's showing. All right, so next is the bamboo forest. I took a bus down to Kyoto's bamboo forest. Now, the bamboo forest was incredible. The fresh air, these huge bamboo trunks that are towering over you. It's honestly a sight to, to see. I'm used to seeing those small bamboo sticks that are very, very thin. However, these were huge, massive, like almost the size of my hand. All right, friends, so I've just entered the bamboo forest right now, and it's honestly breathtaking. Like the air is so fresh here, and maybe it's because of the mountains and uh, mountainous region that, uh, that this is surrounded by, or maybe it's the bamboos themselves. I don't know how much oxygen they produce per bamboo, but it's it's surreal, right? Like you're you're seeing these tall, tall bamboo bamboo shoots, and they're maybe like four or five stories tall, right? In terms of building height, um, and overall like very clean. Everything's super super tidy here. Uh, the path, um, and then you also see, uh, you know, I wonder if there's any pandas or any any wildlife here as well. Um, it's quiet. It's it's really nice overall so I'm gonna sh give you guys a little bit of a show as to what it looks like all right so I'm gonna do a little bit of a walk around here at the forest uh, just give you a view as to what it looks like to actually walk through this forest in person okay so I think there is a bit of a uh, ceremony going on here you see the mountains as well so maybe it's for a funeral procession or something like that not really sure <laughs> this also seems to be train tracks right right around the corner uh, but as you can tell like the path is just uh, you know it's it's nice it's clean uh, it's well well maintained I'm sure it takes a lot of effort to maintain this as you can see you know you, you have rebar uh, in the ground which is uh, which is probably uh, there in terms of the foundations uh, or those, those could be roots honestly I have no clue uh, and then you you also see uh, this kind of fence, fence-like thing, okay, with, um, uh, you know, uh, so so that maybe the bamboos don't grow on the other side of the path. And then you gotta see a dense forest right here. You've got these tree trunks that are massive. I don't know if you can see, but this is my hand, okay? And this is the trunk itself, okay? Like, huge, like tree-like, okay? <laughs> Uh, and you have some of them that are even larger than than kind of the one that I just held on to um, So just just check out how tall these are as well Like you have trees and then the bamboo trunks which are kind of meeting their height meaning their height uh, As you go deeper and deeper it gets nicer and nicer. I don't know why but uh, overall incredible, right? So just giving you a little bit of um, insight into how it looks all right, so another really cool highlight for my trip was the Fushimi Inari Shrine. It's probably the most majestic go-to spot in the country. Imagine a mountain trail that has over 1,000 gates built into it. And at the base of the mountain, you've got a shrine. So for those that are wondering, this is not the easiest hike. I do recommend going in the daytime since it was already sunset by the time we got there. I got a chance to tour this place with my friends Gustavo and Adrian. We had a really, really fun time. However, it did get a little bit dark 
and we had to run from that location since uh, there are wild boar in the area. Uh, however, quite the adventure. Last but not least, I got a chance to check out the Tokyo Sky Tree, which is one of the tallest buildings in the world. It's similar to the CN Tower that we've got here in Toronto, Canada. However, I'm pretty sure this has a seismic building code, which is on another level. All right, so here at the Tokyo Sky Tree, which is an incredible view. You see how tall this thing is? Like, whoa. All right, so. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, the sky tree, I don't really know the history behind it, but uh, it seems pretty cool. It's kind of like Japan Sea and Tower. So we're gonna try to see if we can get to the top. Uh, let's uh, let's see how it is, but uh, cool, really cool vibe here. Nice Christmassy type of energy. So I'm gonna share a little bit of what's going on here. So apparently the Tokyo sky trees, this thing here, okay. trying to map the texture to it. This is the, uh, when in Blender, you try to map a texture to something. This is like, if you want to go over, then you don't have the... No, no. Oh. Taking a little bit of a video. In order to get up to this tower, you've got to take an elevator, which is going as fast as 600 meters per second. Yes, your ears instantly pop because of the pressure difference. So just reached the top of the sky tree here. I know the lighting's pretty bad. <laughs> all right, check that out. That is incredible. While inside the top of the tower, you've got an incredible view of Tokyo city skyline. It was surreal to see Tokyo at nighttime from that angle. I highly recommend getting this night light view of Tokyo if you ever get a chance to get up to the sky tree. Well, there you have it. That's a recap of my adventures while traveling Japan. This is truly an incredible nation that I look forward to visiting again in the near future. If you haven't already, please put this country on top of your travel to go list. Definitely had a blast here. Highly recommend it for everyone. Thanks again for watching. Take care.